with a population of about 9 million people within its metropolitan area. Lima, the capital of Peru, is the fifth largest city in South America. This sprawling metropolis is the second driest world capital after Cairo, rising above a long coastline of crumbling cliffs. Lima is built upon a valley surrounded by an extremely arid desert. Many travelers arrive into Lima specifically to undertake their journey to Machu Picchu, one of the most famous archaeological sites in the planet. They usually miss to explore Lima. However, Lima is really an interesting city. Lima is an abundant variety of experiences when searching for culture and cuisine. The city is full of colonial cathedrals, museums, and government buildings. And as an economic center for the South American continent, the city also boasts the many modern buildings and businesses that makes it a great mix of the past and present. Lima offers an extraordinary range of emotions, sensations, colors, and flavors. Travelers can visit the city's impressive cathedral, fly over the ocean, enjoy photogenic sunset, or savor unmatched cuisine. We spent two days in the city exploring some of its most important attractions. In those two days, amongst others, we walk around the Plaza Mayo. We walk along the Melacoon Milac Forest. We visited the St. Francis Monastery. We had fun at the Magic Water Circuit. And we tried the real ceviche. We contemplated the street art in the neighborhood of Paranco. We visited Larco Museum. We strolled through the Indian market and above all, we took great photos. Oh, so cute. And we hope this will inspire you for your next sightseeing trip to Lima. We started our first day in Lima, around the Marichon de Miraflores. Miraflores is one of the wealthiest residential districts in metropolitan Lima. The Miraflores government has spent years improving and adding to the district's green spaces, with a special emphasis on El Miraflores, a six-mile stretch of parks situated along the cliffs high above the Pacific Ocean. The food scene in Peru has been gaining international attention lately and many people who visit Peru are keen to try a lot of Peruvian food while visiting Lima. Miraflores is the mecca of good food in Lima. There are an incredible amount of options within the district ranging from traditional to experimental and from affordable to top shelf. We found a really nice restaurant with an excellent view of the coastline. We could drink pisco sour, taste the real ceviche. Peru's national drink is pisco. Pisco is a distinctive brandy made in Peru and Chile by distilling fermented grape juice. Pisco sour is a classic cocktail that you will probably see on most bar menus. It is the national cocktail of both Peru and Chile made with pisco brandy simple syrup, lime juice, egg white. Ceviche is the famous dish from Latin America where fresh fish and other seafood is cooked in lime juice and mixed with chili, coriander, cilantro, onion and other flavorings.
protected from the ocean breeze by a colorful wall of mosaics. Parque del Amor, Love Park in Miraflores is the ideal place to work hand in hand with that special someone. The centerpiece is a massive statue of two lovers locked in a passionate embrace. Environed by walls inscribed with love quote, it is virtually breathtaking romance. You will hardly find another place on earth or a monument built specifically for lovers, except here in Miraflores. Few steps away from the Parkway del Amor, there is a taking off point for parasailers. The Melacon de Miraflores is the prime spot for parasailing in Lima. Gliders jump off the cliffs and ride the winds, whipping off the ocean below. For 50 US dollars, you can take a 10 minute fly with a trained parasailing guide. We didn't participate in any parasailing activity, but we definitely enjoyed watching that. The next step is the Indian market of Miraflores, a 25-minute walk from Parque del Amor. I think we took more than 25 minutes. It was a long and pleasant walk as we discovered some of the hidden features of Miraflores, such as the central park of Miraflores, the John Kennedy Park, and the Church of the Miraculous Virgin. Located in the heart of Miraflores, the John Kennedy Park displays local art and jewelry and makes a great place for a family dinner. Tart vendors offer some of Lima's most famous street foods. Its location in the heart of Miraflores makes it a popular gathering point day and night. Amphitheaters allow for street entertainment in the afternoons and early evenings. In the heart of the park, are the Miraflores Municipal City Hall and the Church of the Miraculous Virgin. One of the notable features of the church is its stained glass windows. The windows located on the wings of the church tell the story of Jesus' life. The colors, the contagious happiness of Peruvian vitality all come together in the Indian market located in Miraflores, where you can deal directly with craftspeople. Among the items you'll find here, those that stand out are the baskets, bags and backpacks made by hand, pieces of llama skin, upholstery embossed with typical Peruvian scenes, hats and jacket woven with alpaca, bracelets made of typical Cusco blanket, and decorative objects made in wood or clay which are delicately painted. When we were there, the market seemed empty. Maybe we reached the market late, but it was an interesting experience. After the market, we were rushing to reach Museo de Sitio Puclana, also in Miraflores, as it was getting darker and darker. An ancient religious site built by the Lima civilization between 200 AD and 700 AD. This complex comprises several pyramid-shaped constructions oriented to the sea. Since this place was a ceremonial space dedicated to the adoration of the moon and the ocean. We reached the site after 13 minutes walk from uh, the Indian market. It was still open, but we decided not to enter because it was dark. Our last stop for the day is the Circuito Magico del Aqua. 
the magic water circuit, a 14 minute Uber ride from Museo de Sito, Buclana. Build within the Parque de la Reserva. This indulgent series of illuminated fountains is so over the top, it can help but injures to perfection among even the most hardened travel scenic. The Magic Water Circuit has the Guinness Book Record of the largest fountain complex in the world, displaying 13 distinct fountains and many are interactive. All of the fountains are illuminated at night, many with continuously changing color schemes. A colorful laser light program synchronized with a medley of tunes comprising everything from Peruvian words to ABBA makes the fountain sparkle and shine as the water flows in unique patterns and shapes. It has to be seen to be believed. It was so impressive and I was really in awe of the colorful display. On our second day in Lima, we will be exploring the historic center of Lima, containing some of Lima's most popular tourist attractions such as the Basilica, and convent of San Francisco and Plaza de Armas de Lima. Being the capital of Peru, People come from all over the country to seek better opportunities in the capital. Thus, Lima is expanding rapidly. The city has continued to grow outwards through the expansion of slum settlement. On our way to the Basilica of San Francisco, we encountered some slums. In Brazil, the slums are called favelas. In Lima, they are called pueblos jovenes, meaning young towns in English. This church and monastery of St. Francis is known for its catacombs and a magnificent library that houses thousands of antique texts. With its ornate facade and bell towers, the Convento of San Francisco is one of Lima's most impressive sites. The convent's massive church, the Iglesia de San Francisco, is the best example of Lima Baroque architecture. Its handsome carved portal will later influence those on other churches. The central nave is known for its beautiful ceilings painted in a style called Mudejar, a blend of Moorish and Spanish designs. An interesting fact about this church is that it was built on top of catacombs, which served as a cemetery during the colonial times. A visit to its basement will surprise you with bones and skulls of around 25,000 people. There was a lot of birds. And something interesting, at the sound of the church music, the birds will start flying around. It, it looks like they were actually dancing. When the music stops, they'll come back to the wall, waiting for the next dance. It was really something cool to see. After the Church of San Francisco, we headed to the Plaza de Armas, just five minutes walk from the church. 
A small break to taste churro, a type of fried dough very popular in Lima. Through the street of the historic center of Lima, we reach Plaza de Armas. Pretty much every Peruvian city has a Plaza Mayor or Plaza das Armas, which is the equivalent to a main square, usually where the cities started. It is the same way in Lima, and when you are at Plaza de Armas, you can appreciate the Peruvian colonial beauty. Surrounding it, you can find Lima's Cathedral, Bishop's House, the Governor's Palace, and the City Hall. It has been the place for trading and for major events such as the Peruvian independence. To this day, Peruvians gather at the plaza for political events and every day thousands of people go by it to shop for business reasons or political assignments at institutions and corporations in the area. Embellishing the center of the plaza is a beautiful bronze fountain set on what was once the grounds of the city's gallows. To mark our visit to the square, we took some photos at the popular colorful Lima sign. The next stop is the Museo Larco, 18 minute Uber ride from Plaza de Armas. The Museo Larco is housed in an exquisite 18th century vice royal mansion and surrounded by beautiful gardens. The museum's galleries exhibit the finest and most magnificent gold and jewelry treasures from ancient Peru and a renowned exotic collection, one of Peru's most celebrated attractions. Founded in 1926, the Museo Larco holds the largest and most important archaeological collection of ancient Peru in the world. After the museum, we headed to Barranco, the most romantic and bohemian district of Lima. 20 minutes Uber ride. Barranco. Barranco. Yeah. Tranquilo, bonito, beautiful. Barranco is one of the city's hippest neighborhoods with colorful street art, chalk doing bars and coffee shops, vibrant old mansions and summer houses, beautiful museums, delicious food, and plenty of bohemian vibes. A great start to the Barranco neighborhood is making your way across the Puente de los Cispiros, or Bridge of Size, one of the most famous landmarks of the neighborhood. This wooden bridge comes with a legend that states that if you make a wish and hold your breath for the entire time you walk across the 100-foot bridge, then your wish will come true. We could see street art on every corner. Mm -hmm. 
These vibrant displays are everywhere and constantly changing with whimsical, realistic and graffiti style displays. We ended our last day in Lima at the La Coma shopping center in Miraflores. With breathtaking views of the Pacific Ocean, La Coma is a trendy, nice upscale shopping center located at the top of Miraflores cliffs. With open air terraces for enjoying the view and having a bite to eat, shoppers can relax in between dips into upmarket designers' boutiques and charming shops selling Peruvian handicrafts. Around 160 shops and boutiques offer a wide variety of products for the high end customers and tourists. This is the end of our visit in Lima. We are on our way to Machu Picchu. Yes, Lima for most is just a necessary stopover to Machu Picchu. Lima, the city of kings, can be much more than just that. The oldest city in the Americas offers world-class cuisine, vestiges of colonial architecture, foremost archaeological museums, a vibrant nightlife, and some of the best luxury hotels in Peru. Thus, Lima is gaining popularity among travelers as more than a stopover to Machu Picchu. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe for more. Next time, we are taking you to the famous Machu Picchu. Till then, keep traveling. See you.